In this video, I will demonstrate the application included in this project for the variable RGB LED on the Raspberry Pi 2 device. The first thing I'm going to do is bring up the web interface on the Raspberry Pi. We will use this to take a look at CPU performance at certain points during the demo. Now I'll switch over to Visual Studio and start the application. We could have just as easily started the application from the web interface if it had been deployed to the device already, but we'll use the debugger in Visual Studio. Here we see the application deploying and starting on the Raspberry Pi device. If this is the first time the application is deployed, it may take a few minutes to start. We will see the main view of the application in a few seconds. The application is running now. You can see the Raspberry Pi device in the lower right corner. I'm going to click the Defaults button to get the default pulse frequency set. You can see on the screen that all of the values are set to zero and the LED is currently off. Let's go ahead and select some color to see the output on the LED. You will see some flickering in the video, which to some extent is the product of how the video is captured and partially due to the pulse frequency. When you set up the circuit and run the code for yourself, you will not see the LED flickering as much. Take a look at the purple color on the screen. The LED color is a pretty good match. Now I'll adjust the blue color. Watch as the LED changes color. I will now select a color from the list of predefined colors at the bottom of the screen. One thing to note is that in this current release, opening the combo box uses a large amount of CPU. Let's select Midnight Blue and compare the screen color to the LED color. I'll select another color and demonstrate the CPU spike when the combo box is opened. You can see the CPU spike when the list is displayed and as I move the mouse around. Once the list is closed, the CPU will return to normal. Also notice the LED actually goes on and off. This highlights the limitation of the software-based PWM in that, since it requires the CPU, it will fail to work properly when the CPU is busy doing something else. To demonstrate the CPU usage, I will increase the frequency of all three colors to their maximum values. With the current frequency setting, the CPU is running at about 25%. Watch now as it increases as the pulse frequency of each color is increased. Now watch as I drop the frequency values back to their default values. The CPU will return to its normal level. Again, this demonstrates one of the limitations of using a software-based PWM. Now I'll adjust each of the individual colors so you can get an idea of how the various levels of intensity work when the value is changed. Let's start with green. Now let's try blue. Notice as the slider moves, the LED flickers again. The reason for this is that while the slider is moving, the value is being saved to the application state causing some disk I.O. The disk I.O. requires the CPU and therefore has an impact on the LED operation. And finally, red. You may be tempted to think that raising the pulse frequency will eliminate flicker, but doing so will increase the CPU usage, which has an impact on the rest of the system. Finding the right frequency is a balance of system performance against LED performance, which will vary based on your specific application's need. This is something you can play around with when you are using the application on your own circuit. In the hardware component list, I include an LED diffuser. In my circuit, I use a diffused LED, which essentially mixes the three colors. On some RGB LEDs, the colors will look distinct and not be mixed. You can add a diffuser to get better blended color. 
Here are some various colors with the diffuser attached to the LED. Well, that's the demo. I hope you like this project, and I hope you enjoy working with the code. Thank you.